Hello friends, my name is the Real Emil and welcome back to some more Fort Top Gear Laps. Today we're taking a look at some retro muscle cars. Now I should just say quickly before we get into this video, retro muscle cars for the purposes of this video is anything produced between the late 70s and the early 2000s. With that being said, the first car of today is the Holden Tirana A9X, 216 horsepower, 2520 pounds of weight. This is the lightest vehicle here today and actually a very, very light muscle car all in all. So the Tirana then, it is down on power compared to those classic muscle cars we had around last time and it is actually, it does weigh a bit less. However, it does drive very similar to those. Um, it is very much like driving a classic muscle car this. Now when I say it's like driving a classic muscle car, I would more put it on par with the Ford Mustang Boss 302 over say something like the Cuda which just had no handling uh, in the last episode. Yeah, this is a pretty solid to drive muscle car. Of course, the Tirana is, I believe, an Australian sports car legend. Uh, this was a car which sparked a bit of a media outcry along with the Ford Falcon of the time. Uh, basically, Australian media got pissy over the fact that these cars could do over 150 miles per hour or something like that. Uh, but yeah, other than that, that's a bit of an interesting Tirana fact I thought I'd throw in here because as far as driving goes, it's pretty unremarkable. You know, it is just a classic muscle car, essentially. Um, you know, you do sort of look at this car and think maybe it's more like an Escort or something, but nope, this is a true-blooded muscle car, just like a Charger or a Mustang or something like that, so, yeah. Um, I enjoyed the Tirana. I do kind of like the Holden Tirana, actually. It's a cool-looking car. It's a duty little thing. Uh, this is not the last we've seen of Holden on this episode either, so that's something to look forward to. Anyways, next up, going from a solid car to uh, a, a not-so-solid car, this is the death of the muscle car right here. This is a Ford Mustang II King Cobra, 139 horsepower, 2,669 pounds of weight. Yes, you heard me right, a 139 horsepower from a 5-litre V8 engine. Yeah, the fall of the muscle car in the 70s was a pretty great one and the King Cobra really symbolises that because this was the best the Mustang 2 could really do, at least from factory anyway. Yeah, uh, the Mustang 2 is slow, it is not very nice to drive, it's not very nice to look at, it is not a good car by any stretch of the imagination and it's much the same like that in the game as well. This car, I did not like driving this car. Um, the diff is quite open on this vehicle, it's not particularly good through the corners, it is agonizingly slow on a straight, like this thing is just the slowest car here by far. This thing actually makes the Mini Cooper S look competitive in a straight line, there's just no straight line speed in the Mustang 2. To its credit, I will say, you know, the interior view had a nice view out of it, I guess, you know, visibility is good and all the rest of it, and well, I took this thing for a time trial build almost a year ago now, and it actually succeeded with a new engine being put in it. I think I put like a NASCAR engine or something in it, and it works, so yeah, I mean, if you dropped a NASCAR engine in it, and did a lot of other tuning, it'd probably work, as it's stock though, don't even touch it with a barge pole. Thankfully, though, we go back onto another Holden, and this one's the Commodore VL, 241 horsepower, 3,120 pounds of weight. Now, uh, the Commodore, a bit like the Tirana, really, this is a, another race car, sports car legend. This one actually ran in V8 supercars, I believe, and this was sort of a homologation special to get it into there. Now, the Commodore VL, you sort of look at it and get a rough idea for how it's going to drive. It has the very extreme body kit on it, which I do kind of like. It looks a bit like an old Vauxhall saloon. Uh, so you don't think much of the way it's going to drive, but honestly, the, t the Commodore really surprised me. First time I drove this car, I didn't think much of it. But now that I've gone back to it, it is a really good car to drive this one, actually. And I'm not just saying, you know, really good to drive for a muscle car, I'm saying this is a really good car to drive in general. It's extremely easy to drive. A beginner could throw this thing around a course, no problem. Uh, you can get the tail sliding if you really, really push it, but the Commodore is absolutely fantastic to drive. Great amount of fun as well. Um, it's not often that you'll find a car which is great to drive and also fun to drive, but the Commodore really does blur the lines here. Of all the cars here today, this was the most surprising. Of all the cars here today, this was the best to drive. 
I loved it. I really did. I, I kind of regret overlooking the Commodore a little bit now because it is a very, very solid car. I do recommend you give this one a spin if you haven't already. Next up, we have a Chevrolet Camaro IROC Z, 245 horsepower, 3,627 pounds of weight. Surprisingly, this is actually the heaviest vehicle here today. 3,600 pounds is a lot more than I was expecting the IROC Z to weigh. You know, you sort of look at this thing and, you know, it actually looks less like a muscle car and a bit more like a sports car. Uh, but no, it weighs a lot. Uh, and that does affect its handling capabilities. Now, don't get me wrong, it is a decent car to drive, the Camaro. Um, it is better than that goddamn King Cobra was. Um, it's better than some of the other cars on this list, but it is also a very heavy feeling car. This It's one of those lethargic feeling cars, a bit like the Monte Carlo SS. Um, it does feel a bit lethargic compared to the Fox Body Mustang. Uh, you know, that was lethargic as well, but the Fox Body did have a bit more life in it than the IROC did. Personally, between the Fox Body Mustang and the IROC Z, even though I'm not a huge Camaro fan, I do prefer the Camaro. I actually like this model of Camaro. Ironically, it's probably one of, it is my favourite model of Camaro. Uh, especially when they made that, um, the concept one with the Ferrari wing on it. That was cool. Um, yeah, I like this model Camaro uh, to drive. It's decent. It's all right. Uh, I would recommend pulling some weight reduction into it uh, if you are going to drive the IROC Z. But you know, as far as a cheap car to just go racing in, the IROC Z is certainly not a bad choice. Now we start moving on to those early 2000s muscle cars, and we start with the Ford Mustang Cobra R. This is an SN95 model, of course. 385 horsepower, 3,589 pounds of weight. This is the most powerful vehicle here today by a pretty hefty margin, actually. Uh, admittedly, bringing the Cobra R here is a little bit unfair compared to pretty much every other muscle car of its time in the game. The Cobra R, PI-wise, just storms all of them. This is the only car here which is a B-class car. Admittedly, it's only one PI into B-class, but it is still a B-class car, and... The Cobra R is very, very quick, actually. Around uh, the track, this thing is rather, rather quick. Um, overall driving dynamics, it's decent. It's, yeah, it's a decent car to drive, certainly. Uh, it's not as good as, say, a muscle car, uh, sorry, a sports car from the time you know. It's not an R34 or anything like that. Um, but it's a solid enough car. It still has a bit of muscle car charm to it. You know, it will go sideways if you want it to. You can sort of see it. Uh, having a little bit of a slide there through follow through which was a little bit scary especially considering if you go a bit wide there it is very easy to roll the cars while they're doing that um, but I did manage to survive that so it was nice yeah SN95 was a solid uh, car to drive I've every time I've driven this car I've never really had an issue with it so yeah it also cool car cool car uh, next up, the Chevrolet Camaro 35th Anniversary Edition, 325 horsepower, 3,554 pounds of weight. Of course, uh, this coexisted alongside the Cobra R. This was sort of the Camaro's gleaming thing from this era, I guess. I'm not sure if there was a more powerful Camaro. They may have been. Either way, uh, a bit like the Irox Z, this is actually a model of Camaro that I do kind of like. Again, I'm not a huge Chevrolet Camaro fan. Anyone who's followed me for any length of time will know that. However, I believe it's the 3rd gen and the 4th gen, which is what this is. I like both of these body styles of cars, I actually kind of... Yeah, I don't know, it's something about these cars I do kind of like. Um, the 35th Anniversary Edition, though, to drive, again, it's another decent car. Very similar to driving the Cobra R, this, admittedly. Uh, you do miss out on the straight line speed, of course, I mean, it's 60 horsepower down, and... It does weigh a little bit less, but... It's really negligible. But... Yeah, it's another decent car to drive, certainly. Um, you know, that's the thing that does surprise me. You know, these early 2000s muscle cars, you know, you expect them not to handle particularly well because they're on that bit of a weird period before, you know, the modern muscle car, which is all very good, and those sort of 80s, 90s boxes, which weren't too good. Um, but, you know, surprisingly, these vehicles are decent uh, when it comes to their driving capabilities, and yeah, the 35th anniversary of Mustang was enjoyable to drive. And finally, it wouldn't be right to round this off uh, without the trio 
of this sort of early 2000s muscle car. And we go to the Pontiac Firebird WS6 as our last one. 325 horsepower, 3,495 pounds of weight. Guess what I'm going to say about the driving ability of this one? Again, decent. It's a decent car. Now, admittedly, the Firebird is essentially the 35th anniversary edition Camaro. Um, they have the same power figures, same engine, I believe. Uh, the Firebird is a little bit lighter, however, for whatever reason, the Firebird is slower. I, I don't know why the Firebird's slower than the Camaro. Like, there's a good 60 PI in this, and there isn't really any reasonable explanation for it. I mean, I guess maybe the Camaro handles a bit better. When driving the, the two cars, they feel very similar. Admittedly, the Firebird does feel not as quick in a straight line. Um, but, you know, out of the two cars, you know, driving them back to back, you can't really tell the difference. Uh, if I was to say there's a difference, I'd say maybe the Firebird was a little bit nicer through the corners because you're going into the corners a little bit slower because it doesn't have quite the same amount of straight line speed. Honestly, both of these cars drive absolutely identical. Picking between the two really comes down to your personal personal preference on the looks. The WS6 is a damn weird car to look at, but yeah, I kind of like it. Anyways, onto the times. And it is the SN95 Cobra R that goes into first place today, going in 62nd with 128.453. Beats an R32 Skyline, which is pretty darn good. Splits the E46 and the R32 up. Likewise, the 35th Anniversary Edition Camaro also does really well, splitting the two Subarus up with a 128.824, which puts it in 65th place. Really good showing from both of those cars, actually, um, when you consider what was working against them. Uh, the Firebird does find its way a little bit more down the board, 88th, 130.790, but that's still a decent time. I mean, it built, beats a Focus ST, beats a Porsche 911 Turbo, an Audi S1. That's not bad for a car which is, you know, over a decade old at this point, uh, and has, again, it's a muscle car. It shouldn't really work here. Uh, the Commodore VL finds itself in 110th with a 132.681, very good time from it there, beats the Duke and the SVT Fox body. Camaro IROC goes into 115th with a 133.501, not a bad showing from that car, certainly a little bit slower than a BRZ, quicker than a bar 500, and the Charger Daytona, interestingly enough, so... And that was the fastest car from the classic Muscle Cars episode as well. Uh, the Tirana finds itself in 140th with a 136.499. Uh, does beat our Cleo Williams. It's sort of in this weird all sorts of cars at the bottom-ish of the board. Not a terrible uh, time from the Tirana though, especially when you consider how down on PI it is compared to the other cars. And the King Cobra did terribly. 154th, 142.974. Admittedly, it is a little bit better than I was expecting it to be. It's not too far off the Monte Carlo SS, to be honest with you. Um, but the King Cobra is a horrible car and you should avoid it at all costs. Anyways, and that is it for this episode of the Forza Top Gear Laps. I do hope you've enjoyed. Next time we'll be taking a look at some much faster cars as we ramp up to the modern muscle cars of the modern age. Uh, so join me for that next time. Thank you all very much for watching. My name's been The Real Emil, and until next time, farewell.